According to my clock on my phone, it now is 6 o'clock, so I'll call the March 28th meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission of Bastrop to order. <coughs> Item number two, under citizen comments. At this time, three-minute comments will be taken from the audience on any topic. To address the commission, please submit a fully completed request card to the commission chairperson, that's me, prior to the beginning of the meeting. In accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, if a citizen discusses any item not on the agenda, city, com, the city commission cannot discuss issues raised or make any decision at this time. Instead, the commission are limited to making a statement of specific information or a recitation of existing policy in response to the inquiry. Issues may be referred to city staff for research and possible future action. It's not the intention of the city of Bastrop to provide a public forum for the embarrassment or demeaning of any individual or group. Neither is it the intention of the commission to allow a member of the public to slur the performance, honesty, and or integrity of the commission as a body or any member or members of the commission individually or collectively, nor any members of the city's staff. Accordingly, profane, insulting, or threatening language directed toward the commission and or any person in the commission's presence will not be tolerated. At this time, I'll ask, is there anyone in the audience who wishes to make a statement under citizen comments? Seeing none, we'll move on to item three. Items for individual con uh, consideration. Item 3A, consider action to approve meeting minutes from the February 28, 2019 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. I think we have a correction. Yes, um, remember we were preparing the packet today um, to be distributed to Dias. Um, Jennifer did call to my attention that there was an inaccurate date. So it was a, the February, February 28th meeting. However, we were seeing the November 29th meeting minutes. So I went ahead and I did the correction. The corrected minutes with the appropriate date of the meeting minutes that we would be approving is accurate. And it was November 28th. The minutes? November what? 29th. 29th, okay. But it says February 28th. Right. The ones that were in the gotcha. And also the staff report says February. So has everyone had an opportunity to review the minutes? Are there any additions, corrections, deletions? If not, I'll accept a motion. Motion to approve as is. Motion to approve Second. as is. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you very much. <laughs> Item 3B, public hearing and consider action to recommend approval of an ordinance for a conditional use permit to allow an accessory structure up to 400 square feet on 0.71 acres, Tahitian Village, Unit 1, Block 19, Lot 598, 599, and 600, located at 149 Mahalo Court, an area zoned SF9, Family 9, within the city limits of Bastrop, and forward to the next city council meeting. Ms. Bills. Good evening. So the request uh, that the applicant has uh, given is to place a 384 structure at their address at uh, 149 Mahala Court. Uh, our zoning ordinance requires any accessory structure over 240 square feet um, in the SF9 zoning district to obtain a conditional use permit. So this property is located um, in Tishan Village within the city limits portion of Tishan. It's, uh, it was three lots that are now one. Um, and there's a house in the middle. The, um, it's zoned uh, the whole area. You can see where the edge of the city limits is uh, with the zoning uh, SF9, single family nine, which is a 9,000 square foot lot minimum size. Uh, what they're proposing to place on the lot is a 384 square foot uh, tough shed brand. Um, so it'll be re uh, uh, moved onto the site. Um, they'll have to get building permits, to make sure it's anchored to the uh, 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 piers, I think, that they're putting down. So where it's going on the site is that it's on a curve kind of there. So and if you go, uh, go out there, it's actually kind of up from the road a little bit. Um, the road's cut down a little. 
from the uh, finished floor elevation of the house. So it'll be a 16 by 24 shed uh, located behind the front facade. So if you if you draw a line where the front facade is, this will be behind that. So it won't be the first thing you see on the lot. Uh, within the CUP uh, criteria, there are four, uh, five main criteria that the use is harmonious, um, that the activities requested are associated with the base district, uh, that the nature of the use is reasonable, uh, that there's no impact, uh, negative impact on surrounding uh, property owners, and that if there's anything else, additional conditions. Uh, staff finds that it's an accessory structure, it's an accessory use that goes with uh, a single family dwelling, that the nature of the request is reasonable and that this should, should be approved. Additionally, they went through the um, ex exception process with city council, so they, uh, staff has reviewed and council's reviewed uh, the drainage on this lot, found that they won't be impacting any of their neighbors uh, by the addition of the shed. Uh, so even, even though I think you said that it was a little bit higher than the road, mm -hmm. but it won't have any effect on anybody downhill from it? No. Okay. Yeah, there's a ditch between the road and the, the property that the water conveys. Additionally, it will be uh, elevated, so it will have, the, the water has plenty of room. It's a 0.7 acre lot, so there's a, a lot of room for the um, drainage to absorb in on the site itself. So, a question. So, we're saying that this is behind the front facade of this of this property, or the home, I should say, mm -hmm. but it's also a significantly curved uh, street. So, mm -hmm. um, I guess whether it's behind the facade or not, is depending on whether you look at it from a single angle versus a different angle. So from that point in the road, and we may not have this answer right now, but from the point in the road where the shed's at, is it is that not the first thing you see when you're standing on the road? Because it's not really behind the, the front facade of the house. If you're standing directly on the road, yes, you would see it. But even if it was set further back, you would still see it. I'm just, I'm looking, I'm looking, I just, I don't know if I necessarily agree that it's behind the front facade just because the, if it was if the street was straight then yes but it's not and so it kind of as you come around that curve it's like right there yeah the yeah the, the lot is right on the curve so it actually looks like it's set back because of the curve in a lot of ways because the the front of the house is right on at the middle of the curve on the lot okay. also uh, isn't it um correct that the CCRs in Titian Village would require them to have it back anyway. So yeah, they, they have to receive a separate permit yes. from there. Mm -hmm. And the placement of the setbacks as far as the city's concerned and as far as Tahitian? Yes. It, it'll be it within complies all with all? Them. Yeah, it'll be within all the required setbacks. You can see right there, uh, the side setback is the, the furthest line, the second line from the property line and the front setback um, is that furthest back line. So it's set about 10 feet back from the uh, front build line. Okay. And you sent out the appropriate notices to yes. neighbors? Yes. And there was one uh, notice that came in after the packets were prepared and uh, the neighboring property had no objection. I have one question. Would we ever be reviewing something that the say the architectural control committee for that subdivision has not ever looked at we would be looking they would have already looked at this correct they have to look at it before we all we verify is that they sent it to their um, uh, their HOA we we don't can we don't enforce whatever their HOA enforces that's the HOAs so we're just looking at strictly from a zoning standpoint not yes. from a building mm -hmm. uh, character standpoint yeah so we're looking at it from what our code requires so. Will, will this shed have any kind of utilities to it, or is it just a static building with no utility connections, power, water, anything like that? My understanding at, at current is it's uh, uh, just storage building. Okay. Are there any other questions from the commission? If not, I will entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. Will you please call the roll? Yes. Yes. Cynthia Meyer. Yes. Richard Garton. Yes. Matt Lassen. Yes. Cheryl Lee. Yes. Greg Sherry. Yes. 
Tom Dawson? Yes. Pablo Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bell. Item 3C, discussion regarding the timeline and review of individual chapters of the 2036 Comprehensive Plan. Good evening, everybody. Good so <laughs> at our last uh, commission meeting, uh, we talked about taking a look at the uh, different chapters of the comprehensive plan. Uh, so what we have done is we uh, sat with staff and our city manager and went through the plan and uh, looked at the individual chapters. Um, then we looked at uh, the different uh, work plan items we're currently working on um, and came up with what we hope is a, a suitable plan of action uh, to move forward with uh, reviewing the chapters within uh, the comp plan. Uh, so these are the individual chapters of the comprehensive plan. Uh, it goes through chapter one through chapter nine. Uh, some of the chapters up here, um, there's, there's separate boards and commissions uh, that are currently or uh, fixing to work on, on sections of those plans. Uh, like for instance, uh, the, the BAIPP, the Bastrop Arts in Public Places, they're working on a, a cultural arts master plan right now, so that would fall under uh, chapter eight, uh, that purview. Uh, the Parks Board um, uh, for chapter seven, um, and you know, we have a transportation engineer right now, Kimley Horn, uh, that they're working on our, our updates to our transportation plan. Um, you all will see that, you know, after uh, they, they do that uh, report um, for the engineering firm. Uh, but so we sat down and went through some of these and um, what, it, what we felt really boiled down to it is, is P&Z has all the authority over Chapter 4, the housing and neighborhoods, Chapter 5, land use uh, and community image, and then Chapter 6, the transportation. Uh, so what we thought... Uh, well, let me digress for a second. So these are all of the dates, um, current and upcoming, uh, for just what we're going to be dealing with for building Bastrop for our new code adoption. Uh, this was shared with council recently. Um, so these are uh, finalized dates. Um, so I'll just skip through them right now or get to them right now. Uh, April 10th is a transportation and drainage rodeo. Uh, so that's a public input meeting for the transportation plan and then the drainage uh, update that we're doing right now. Uh, May 9th would be uh, essentially a, a final code rodeo, a final input um, enable for citizens, residents, community, development community, and other to put input on the code before it's uh, written in its final form. Uh, May 24th would be when we receive the uh, draft development code from uh, and, and its completeness and its entirety from our, um, our consultant who's working on that. Uh, following that, immediately on May 29th, there's scheduled to be a joint PNZ and council meeting to discuss the codes. May 30th would be your regularly scheduled meeting. Uh, June 6th, we would have a special meeting to discuss uh, the codes. Um, June 8th is, is a really neat deal. That's going to be a pop-up event in, in downtown um, on the main street, I believe, and that's going to be a, a morning time event. Uh, we'll get the details specifically out on that, but that'll be a really neat opportunity uh, for the community and everybody who's interested to come out and really see how the code will affect, uh, you know, the built environment. We'll have different planners and different things that will kind of showcase how the new codes and everything will actually interact with the city. Uh, so June 8th is a really, a really neat date, and I'd put that on your calendar for sure. Uh, June 22nd, another special PNZ meeting. That would be a Saturday. Uh, June 27th is your regularly scheduled meeting. July 16th uh, is the Boards and Commissions Fair, uh, the Volunteer Fair. July 25th, again, your PNZ meeting. Um, August 29th is a PNZ meeting. And then we would bring the final code back to you for adoption and public hearing on September 26th. So in July and uh, August, you'll see less meeting dates. So the, the consultant would be taking the final input, uh, the final tweak, so to say, during that time and, and working on that. And also, we're, we're knee deep in budget during that time. Uh, so that's kind of why you see a little bit less meetings. But that, this would be the, the schedule that we're proposing for that. So having said that, um, 
in looking at the comprehensive plan review, um, I, I think on chapter four, the housing and neighborhood, because um, I think we all said we could try to fit it in our regular meetings instead of doing additional special meetings to what we're already dealing with with building Bastrop. So if we took uh, three months or three regularly scheduled meetings and held workshops, um, then we could go through chapter four, housing and neighborhoods. And I believe you all have a table of contents at the dais. Um, and so you could kind of look through there and see what we'd be looking at uh, for the housing and neighborhoods. And then starting in July, we'd start with land use and community image. And then in chapter six, transportation. So we'll have the uh, study done by Kimley Horn at that point. And so we can uh, make uh, recommendations on the comprehensive plan based off the most recent transportation study. October, November, and December, with the idea being in December, you can make your recommendations to council for adoption, uh, which will immediately follow the building Bastrop codes and the international uh, building codes, the I codes. Uh, so that's what, what we've come up with. Um, if you're amenable to that, fit, or we're open to suggestions at this point, uh, but that's kind of how we have it laid out. I understand that the June 8th meeting would be going to be really neat. Oh. Um, the the pop-up. I'm sorry. Let me, uh, there we go. The pop-up event, that's, that's going to be during the day, in the morning? Yes, ma'am. It's going to be tough for folks that have to work. That uh, that's a Saturday. To, it's a Saturday? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And that, that's the one where they, sorry, that's the one where they, like, use chalk on the ground to show setbacks yes. and how things look and so you right. can and with those of you ex with experience the environment yes. and so and on and so forth. If okay. you have little kids at home, it's not the chalk I was thinking of when they were talking about it. It's striping chalk, similar to what you'd use on a baseball diamond or something like that. So like you real chalk. Real chalk, not, not play chalk. Is that open to the community? Yes, ma'am, absolutely is. Uh, or who's ever interested. We're not just going to... It's open to the public, I'll say that. And we encourage anybody to come to that. After what we went through last time when we were doing with the subdivision, I'm not sure there's been sufficient time allocated in there first to get together and have discussions on, on the drafts. Um, I think just doing it at our monthly meetings, I think we're going to back ourselves into corners. I'd like to see us schedule more time for P and Z to get together when we get the drafts of each of those to go through them. Because we spent a lot of time going through them and we got into quite a bit of detail. And so I think Let we're me, going to do the same thing. Can I clarify again. if you're speaking about the building Bastrop codes or the comprehensive plan? Com the, the, the comprehensive plans. So you don't, you don't believe that three meeting dates for each chapter is sufficient or no? No, I think we're going to need more time than that. Okay. Because we're going to have to look at what's in there and see with, with what's being drafted, are the two of them going to work or are, is there a place that they're fighting each other? So just, just as a clarification, the, the ordinance portion of the, uh, that requires the review yearly, right? Yes. Really, what is the purpose of that per the ordinance for us? I, I believe, I, I don't know the intent behind it. Uh, it's, it's not very in-depth. It just says, I think it's literally one line in there that says you shall review it uh, on a yearly basis. Because my understanding is that we, we review and we can make recommendations, but we're not going through looking, you know. It's not a rewrite. It was what? It's not a rewrite. It doesn't right. actually it's just, rewrite it's the conference. Because it's a living, breathing document. Yes. We're just making sure that it's, you know, so. I would say this year we probably won't have a ton, but I would say next year, once everything, once all the building bass drop stuff completes, that would be a time where we would probably have a lot we want to upgrade on the, or update on the mm -hmm. comprehensive plan. So I don't know if we need more time than just the three. Just to yeah, yeah, The it. fact that we're doing a massive rewrite on all our codes, I think the two of them, we need to look at them very carefully and spend the time. Now, now keep in mind. I understand what you're saying about next year that we may learn more about it, but. I'd almost like to spend a little extra time this year and make sure that we don't end up giving ourselves more work next year. So right. keep in mind that you won't even be getting the code for adoption until September. And that's why staff had recommended we hold off on this until after the codes were written. Uh, but you all had uh, diff different thoughts on that and kind of wanted to get going and, and we're fine with that. 
Um, but this is kind of the situation we wanted to avoid, not doing good work after bad and, and vice versa. So uh, we're amenable to anything at this point. Um, that's why we brought it to you. Uh, this was the schedule we came up with. We thought three um, uh, regular meetings with work sessions were was pretty sufficient. Um, but we're open. Uh, like I said, th this is what we have on the books already that we'll have to work around. Uh, we're also doing our international building codes with construction standard boards and others. Um, you know, so, uh, but we'll, we'll make it work. Um, but we want you to have the time you think you all need to get through the codes, but we just need to know what that looks like. So this is what we've proposed. If I'm hearing one that says maybe that's not enough, hearing one that says we think we're okay, I heard we don't want to have special meetings if we don't have to, so we're just trying to, to uh, uh, take direction and, and, and produce what you're wanting. So we just need a little bit of clarification would be nice. I, I appreciate the effort that staff has gone through. I know you're doing, you have a lot on your, your plate right now. What I'd like to see us do was is to start into at least the time schedule that staff has come up with. If once we get into reviewing and we see that there's more to it, we can also always say that we don't think that's going to work. But since it's not a rewrite, it's a review. Um, in terms that don't go into specificity as far as as ordinances and codes and the like, I would like to, us to get at least get started and see if we can make it work. If the commission is not comfortable with it and thinks we need more time, we can all, always go back sure. and, and look at it. So would that be okay with you, Richard? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, thank you. Okay. So does the commission, are you okay with this proposed plan and schedule? Okay. I'm, I'm are seeing, they, is there a list I'm of the seeing. dates somewhere that we have, or or will we be provided those dates? Yeah, so April would be your those would be your regularly scheduled meetings. So April the the last Thursday of April, May, June, for instance. Um, but I, we can certainly break it out uh, per per section, um, and we can even if you if you'd like us to, we can take a look at the different chapters at this point. If y'all are generally okay with this and we can take a look at you know chapter four and break it down by section what we'll look at on each individual date sure. um, unless you just want to look at them one ch one chapter comprehensively um, th that's up to you I don't care how we tackle it I don't like um, just the that slide because some of the stuff is falling on Saturday some of the rodeo things are going I see what on. you're saying yeah Oh, okay, so what, what I can do um, is insert those dates into here and add a little bit more detail on your regularly scheduled w which chapters we'll be looking at. Is that okay, Commissioner Lee? Is that what I think that would help. Is that what I you're asking? I think what Cheryl might be asking, which I would like to ask also, is could we get a, this scheduled? Yes, yeah. ma'am. Okay. Yeah, this is <laughs> absolutely. We'll get you a detailed, because um, this is just dates. We do have some times, I think. Um, and where we don't have times, we can, you know, TBD. Uh, but we'll put together a detailed schedule. This was just kind of for conversational purposes. Like, this is what we got on the books, guys. It's not. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll put that together. Okay, everybody happy? Anybody have any other questions? You want any clarifications? I have one question. I may have a conflict for one of those dates, uh, a graduation thing going on in the end of May. Uh, if I have to miss, I'm, I'm sure you just have to have a quorum, correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And if you, if you read ahead and see anything you'd like to have us discuss, just submit it to us and we'll make sure we go over it. If you have any specific yeah. questions. Okay, thank you. Um, for a workshop, we don't need a quorum, do we? Oh, I'll have to check the I don't think we charter. Need for a workshop, we can't take any action. We wouldn't at a workshop anyway. We couldn't take anyway. any action. Um, we'll check the charter okay. and let you know, and we can add that as a, as a side note. Okay. But, um, we'll, we'll, but graduation's we'll, important. Sure. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, while I'm Good here, job. I do want to, uh, we have someone new in our audience. Uh, this is uh, Allison Long. She's our new planner. She joined us just a couple weeks ago. 
Uh, we're really excited to have her. Uh, we stole her from a, a EDC uh, firm in Austin. Um, uh, she's uh, Good. got her master's <laughs> degree and bachelor's degree, and um, she's hit the ground running on helping us with uh, getting some of our historic records scanned in and sorted away. And so uh, she's going to be an asset, we can tell, and we're just happy for her to be with us. So we just wanted to introduce you all to Allison this evening. Welcome. That's all I got. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, y'all already might have done that. Uh, Matt, before you leave, yes. T Tuesday you gave a nice presentation about parking, as you said. Yes. Here, here's something to get the discussion started. Um, I don't know how many people in the commission had a chance to watch it, <clears throat> but I think that might be useful information for us because I'm sure parking is going to step into the master plan and I think it'd be, be useful information for all of us to hear as well. Okay. Yeah. Would you like me to send you the, I think yeah. it's Why in don't the, we cover that under, um, I think it's uh, in the item yeah, we 4B. Can okay. jump right ahead right now if you'd like. Uh, item 4, uh, updates. 4A, update on recent city council actions regarding planning department items. Okay. Last uh, meeting we just met regarding this, so we did not provide anything to council. So there were no uh, actions that they took that uh, you all had um, made a recommendation on. Item 4B, individual requests from planning and zoning commissioners that particular items to be listed on future agendas. Matt, Matt's parking presentation he gave to city council, I think, like I said, it's, it did a nice, here's a foundation, gave a nice history of how we got to where we're at today. So I think it's for, it could be all useful for all of us. You'd like me to give that presentation next time? Yeah, yeah, oh, please, okay. if you would. I'll do my best to reproduce it. Yes, ma'am. I might just play the video and, no, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. We can have that for you next meeting. Okay. Does anyone else have anything that they would like to see on upcoming agendas? Um, does anybody want to move on to item five? Motion to adjourn. Second. We're out of here. Thank you. Thank you.